Several things are happening at one time. On the Internet side, we're faced in 2010 with implementing IP version 6 in parallel with v4. That's really important. It's the only way that it will continue to grow. Second, uh, we are faced with a great many security risks in the network, vulnerabilities that have been and will be exploited by people who don't mean well. Uh, we're going to have to build better facilities to resist and make more resilient the network implementation, whether it's the routers, the domain name servers, uh, the hosts at the edges of the net, and the laptops and desktops and mobiles. So there's this general problem of vulnerability in the net that needs to be addressed. Uh, we need also to build international frameworks that will allow us to do electronic commerce and to carry out electronic uh, contracting and the like. Digital signatures have to have a meaning which is uh, held widely and in common among countries so that when there's a dispute, uh, a digital signature has the same weight that uh, a wet signature does. We don't have any real rules yet that are commonly adopted for that. And there are other kinds of e-commerce related, uh, uh, let's say, legal frameworks that would be beneficial. Uh, the other big change that's coming to the net is mobility. The increasing number of devices that are not only mobile but also internet capable. Uh, that will continue to expand. There's four and a half billion mobiles in the world today and about 20% of them are internet enabled. That percentage will go up over time. That will be one of the single largest transformational change in the net, not counting the IPv6 and, uh, and things like DNSSEC. Uh, finally, I think we are discovering uh, an incredibly rich uh, set of applications that are still evolving out of the World Wide Web. And it's entirely possible that something will not replace but will add to uh, the community of applications on the Internet and in addition to the World Wide Web. We're seeing, for example, a very strong convergence of all media. The Internet will carry virtually anything, whether it's print or imagery or video and audio. Right now, people have tended to think of this convergence as simply carrying all of these older media on this new platform. I think we're in for a surprise, because I think what will happen is that the things that we used to think of as separate, like a book or a movie or an audio soundtrack uh, or a web page, will suddenly become much more interactive. And so while you are, quote, reading a book, you may also find yourself interacting with content out on the net, or the book may actually be dynamically assembling information to show you the changes depending on what you know when you are reading this book. So this notion that we can carry all these media on one platform leads to the possibility that you will interact in very different ways with these media uh, once they are part of the internet environment, especially if you're online at the time that you're doing this. So uh, that I am easily anticipate. The, I've lost track of how many things we're going after, but let me get two more. Um, another very clear trend is increasing speed, not only at the core of the net, but at the edges of the net. That will enable things that we couldn't do before. Think about downloading an hour's worth of video in 10 seconds or something on a gigabit channel, which you can easily do. There's plenty of memory to store that now, and it's cheap. So the idea of downloading things and then doing something with them will become much more normal. And finally, uh, the NASA and the Consultative Committee on Space Data Systems uh, has been rapidly moving towards an interplanetary extension of the Internet to support manned and robotic space exploration. It's been a personal objective of mine to introduce these new protocols in order to allow all of the spacecraft from the spacefaring countries around the world to interoperate with each other in the same way that when you plug your laptop in, you can talk to 750 million machines on the net. I don't think we are, I'm certainly not capable of uh, guessing what the social effects are of having such a large number of people online and dynamically sharing information with each other, but it's already illustrated um, a kind of crowdsourcing-like character, Wikipedia being a good example. But we're seeing the same phenomenon in Twitter, for instance, where many people uh, have the opportunity to express an opinion or to bring a fact to mind, and many, many other people have the ability to access that. This sort of group mind think or global mind think is new, at least at the rate at which uh, these things can, uh, can happen is very new, as opposed to writing a book and waiting months for it to percolate. So we're far from understanding uh, how this technology is going to affect us socially. All I can say is I wish I was eight years old because I want to see what's going to happen in about 50 years' time.